Arthur Bishop resides on a boat in a coastal tourist spot. He begins his day by drinking coffee, listening to his preferred music, and setting a booby trap on his boat as a precaution against theft. He then rides his motorcycle to a nearby restaurant, where he is well known by the patrons. The waiter escorts Bishop to a prime seating area with a view of the ocean. A young woman of Asian descent approaches him and reveals that she has been searching for him. She informs him that her employer wants him to assassinate three people, and that he should make it look like natural deaths. She emphasizes that he should have no trouble with this task as he is an expert in his field. She informs him that if he declines, she will reveal to various entities that he is still alive, and on the run, as he had falsely claimed to have died and abandoned everything. Bishop realizes that the woman is accompanied by people who are giving him menacing looks. He requests her to make a phone call, and as he takes out his phone, he snaps a photo of the woman. As she attempts to pull out a gun, he stops her and strikes her. The individuals accompanying her then launch an attack on Bishop, but he fights back with exceptional skill. He observes on the security cameras that more assailants are closing in on him. In response, he leaps off the wall of the restaurant and escapes via a cable car. The woman and her men pursue Bishop into the cable car, threatening the passengers in order to locate him, but he is above them. She shoots at him, trying to board the cable car, but he jumps off, landing on a tourist-operated inflatable raft. When Bishop returns to his boat later that night, he observes from a distance two individuals searching the boat. Without hesitation, he uses his phone to detonate the boat. He then proceeds to a location with large shipping containers, opens one, and burns his passport and any other identifying documents. Bishop then travels to an island in Thailand and reconnects with an acquaintance who runs a tourist hotel there. She takes him to a room he previously occupied. He opens a hidden compartment in the room and retrieves a bag containing phones, firearms, and multiple passports. He then begins searching for the woman he had photographed at the restaurant. Bishop has gathered information about her and an individual named Crane, who is her employer. When Gina enters and meets the hotel owner, she requests first aid. The hotel owner notices bruises on her hand from the altercation. The hotel owner offers her further assistance, but Gina insists she only needs a first aid kit and leaves. The owner of a hotel that Bishop is familiar with observes a girl being beaten on a boat near the hotel at night. She approaches Bishop and requests his assistance. Upon arriving at the boat, Bishop tells the perpetrator to stop hitting the girl and leave her, but the man refuses and points a gun at Bishop. Bishop overpowers the perpetrator and kills him. He returns to the hotel and informs the owner that the task is complete and requests her to take the girl, named Gina, to the hotel. After searching the boat, he discovers her passport and phone with a photo of himself. He subsequently destroys the boat and returns to the hotel where he inquires Gina about the presence of his photo on her phone. Bishop inquires if she is working for Crane. Gina reveals that Crane had leverage over her and explains that the events were part of a scheme to ensnare Bishop. She says that her mission was to meet him, then call a number on her phone, and then her mission would be complete. Bishop learns that Gina runs a shelter for children who are survivors of human trafficking, and that Crane had threatened to kill the children if she did not comply with his demands. As Bishop observes a boat approaching the island with men on board and keeping watch, he asks Gina to pretend to be friendly with him. She does so, and later apologizes for tricking him, explaining that she had no other options as the children she cares for were her top priority. Bishop expresses understanding of her perspective as he too was an orphan and shares with her that he and Crane were once purchased by a gangster. He tells her that he was able to escape them but Crane did not, leading to the organization punishing Crane and causing Crane to harbor resentment towards Bishop. Bishop devises a plan for escape with Gina, giving her a watch as a keepsake and asking her to keep it until they meet again. The following day, Crane's men arrive and take Gina away. Bishop contacts Crane, demanding a one-on-one -on -one meeting. When they meet, Bishop pleads with him to release Gina. Crane responds that he will let her go, but only if Bishop kills three individuals. Crane provides Bishop with a file containing information about the targets. The first one is an African arms dealer, who is imprisoned in a high-security prison and difficult to reach. Crane then gives Bishop a GPS capsule and requests him to swallow it upon completing the mission for tracking purposes. Bishop asks for proof that Gina is alive and Crane tells him that after each task is completed, he will be allowed to make a phone call to her. Crane informs Bishop that they will send him her location once he finishes his final task. In Malaysia, Bishop examines the details of the prison where the first target is held. He discovers that the prison is situated in the middle of the sea, surrounded by sharks. The prison is surrounded by cliffs that are 100 meters tall, making it a challenging task to enter. Bishop examines the information of several fugitives and chooses one of them, who has a distinct tattoo on their face. He assumes the identity of this individual to carry out his plan. He procures the necessary equipment for the mission. On the second day, he walks on the street and gets arrested, subsequently sent to the prison. Bishop recalls Crane's warning that he would not come to save him if the target was not killed accidentally. Bishop observes that the arms dealer is not alone, but his guards for protection. Bishop inquires with the prisoner about an arms dealer named Krill. The prisoner reveals that Krill is responsible for the assassination of the president of Liberia, 
and has been the target of multiple failed assassination attempts while in prison. When an attempt is made on Krill's life, Bishop intervenes to protect him. In gratitude, Krill invites Bishop to dinner, but ultimately ends up killing him during the meeting. After Krill's death is revealed to have been caused by food poisoning, Bishop escapes by blowing up the prison wall and covering his body with a shark repellent. He then ingests a GPS capsule and jumps into the ocean. The captain of the boat receives a message that Bishop has completed his mission and sends his location. Bishop contacts Gina via video call, where she informs him that he has only 36 hours left to assassinate his second target or she will be killed. Bishop assures Gina that she will not be harmed. Crane provides information about the second target, Adrian, a billionaire involved in mineral business but primarily operates in human trafficking. He resides in an armored skyscraper in Australia on the 58th floor. Bishop is informed that Adrian's apartment is protected by a concrete wall, bulletproof doors and sensor-activated fingerprint entry. Bishop feigns interest in renting a flat below Adrian's, copies the keys, makes detailed drawings, and creates glass bombs. He disguises himself as a maintenance worker and enters Adrian's flat using the copied keys. He then plants the glass bomb in the billionaire's swimming pool, causing it to explode and resulting in the billionaire's death. During her conversation with Bishop, Gina cleverly reveals the location of the boat she is on by pointing a camera at its number. Using this information, Bishop locates the boat by helicopter, boards it, kills some guards, but eventually gets captured. Crane warns Bishop that any further attempts will result in the cancellation of their agreement. He then tasks Bishop with completing one final mission, killing a wealthy American arms dealer named Max, who has acquired a monument to Bulgarian communism. The monument is located on a mountain, which conceals a basin used for repairing submarines. These submarines are equipped with intercontinental missiles and the access to the place is highly restricted and anyone who tried to enter or exit the place have died. After Bishop kills two of the guards, Max beefs up his security measures. Bishop is given 48 hours to complete the mission. He discovers that Max has ordered a medical helicopter. Bishop hides under an airplane and upon arrival, he uses a device to jam the surveillance cameras and overpowers the guards. When the guards try to take Max to a safe room in the building, Bishop destroys the elevator. Max, upon entering the safe room, finds Bishop there. Bishop and Max come to an agreement to pretend that Max is dead and trick Crane. For Crane to confirm Max's death, he sends his men to search for his body, leaving him alone on the boat, making it easy for Bishop and Max to kill him. Max's death was staged and an explosion is set off in the headquarters where Max is located. Max escapes into the basin where Bishop is waiting with an oxygen bottle and they both swim to an island. Bishop contacts Crane to demand the release of Gina, but Crane demands proof of Max's death. Bishop informs Crane that Max's body is on his submarine, and Crane sends his men to verify. Meanwhile, Bishop sets up explosives at the submarine dock in preparation for their arrival. When Crane's men reach the submarine dock, Bishop kills them. Crane observes the events through security cameras. Bishop enters Crane's boat and eliminates all the guards. Gina is injured by gunfire. Crane activates the boat's self-destruct mechanism. Despite the explosion, Bishop manages to reach Gina and places her in a survival pod, which separates from the boat before it detonates. Bishop and Crane engage in a physical battle and Bishop ultimately secures him with a chain before the boat explodes. Gina is saved. Max and his crew observe as a portion of the exploded boat is retrieved from the water. The movie ends with Gina being reunited with her kids and surprised to see Bishop. Additionally, Max views the surveillance footage and discovers that Bishop had been hiding in the emergency steel room on the boat. Watch next and see how a crew embarks on a journey into the deepest side of the universe, on a mission to find an alien specie who are believed to be the creators of humanity. Please subscribe and turn on notifications to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.